Chairman, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Energy, water, food security, three major indispensable basic needs and rights of every human being on the planet. Having access to those is not a luxury, it's a matter of survival. There is, however, another basic right of every society and every nation, the right to develop, grow, improve economy as well as life standards. Global population is growing. We are 7 billion now. We'll be around 9 billion around 2050. That's why development and economic growth must mean new jobs. The new manpower will be a very important asset and competitive advantage of the fastest growing nations, Asian countries, and India in particular, are among those. The scarcity of available natural resources will remain a major challenge so we need to use them wisely and in an efficient and sustainable manner. Sustainability does not mean self-limiting only. It means wisdom, innovation, efficiency, good governance, inclusion of uh, social aspects in, in the equation. It is indisputed paradigm of social and economic development. The real innovation lays in ability to build real economy based on value chain, able to manufacture real products and offer real services. <coughs> Indigenous knowledge, tra traditional wisdom also needs to be preserved. In the, it is underestimated asset to be used along with the latest technologies achievements and not against it. Innovation does not mean replacement or forgetting the local wisdom. It must be complementary, not contradictory. Environment is entirely the, in, is the resource. We use all its components. There is no life without clean water. Industries and households need it. No food could be produced no energy generated. Generation of power without water, with some exceptions, is not possible. And the potential of photovoltaics and wind is limited, even here in India. Nobody needs to follow the footsteps of developed economies. Poland knows this very well. Over the last 20 years, we tripled our GDP, and at the same time, we reduced our emissions of greenhouse gases by 30%. It wouldn't be possible without la latest technologies, new IT systems, efficiency-oriented management, customized trainings. Those who had no chance to develop in the past must not be deprived from their good right to improve their life now. But climate is changing, and consequences of weather extremes are becoming more and more dangerous. We need to adapt to climate change, reduce all kinds of emissions, energy consumption, and use of resources. This is our common responsibility that should be approached differently but all, by all taking into account national circumstances and respect capabilities of countries' economies. The services and goods provided by environment are not for free. The resource we use, the space provided for storage of waste or emitting pollution to air have their price. The Honorable Prime Minister of India mentioned it in his uh, opening address. The nature cannot issue invoices. It is the obligation of states to protect the interest, claim the fees for, 
from those who use the environment and invest the revenues in order to reduce the impact and its consequences. Polish National Fund for Environment Protection in Water Management has been designed according to such a concept. Billion of dollars raised by Polish entrepreneurs, the users of the environment have been invested in environmental projects aimed at water management, air, air quality improvements, water waste management, and the remediation of polluted land. The obligation to pay ecological fees drives technological innovation, resource and energy efficiency. As a result, environmental impacts are reduced, quality of environment is improved, more efficient business gain a competitive advantage. System of financing environmental protection is a very important element of our transformation. It has been serving the environment and economy over 25 years already as a renewable source of financing. Those 25 years dramatically transformed my country. We are ready to share our recipe for the success with all willing to follow. There is no copyright on it. Ladies and gentlemen, this year Poland will host UN Climate Summit. It is my ambition as the next COP president that Warsaw Conference result in making significant progress on the way to the agreed in Durban new global instrument with legal force which would applicable to all and enter into force by 2020 at the latest. I came here to you, to this distinguished forum, to, to consult, to listen, to everybody willing to share with me the views on how to make it happen. And I want to make sure all voices are heard, heard and noted properly. Nearly everybody suffers directly or indirectly from weather extremes, floods, and hurricanes claiming human lives and are also affecting supply and the manufacturing chains. Climate change negotiations are about equitable access to sustainable development, are about access to clean water, about access to technologies, about ensuring that seven billion today and possibly twice as many at the end of the century will survive. Major economies, both developed and emerging, are particularly responsible for leading their efforts to mitigate emissions and to adapt. Such a leadership based on environmental standards, such a, which are not against industries, but in contrary, help to build a long-term competitive advantage and better environment for business development, thanks to the inclusion of environmental products and services in value chain. Such a leadership will create new opportunities for business and regions, cleaner and healthier environment, food and water security, sustainable energy supplies. Such a leadership should include political commitments by governments and hence developed cooperation, public and private climate resilient investment programs, education and awareness raising campaign. They are all are urgently needed. We do hope that Warsaw's COP will pave the road for a such future. Thank you. Thank you very much.